and we are back. It is time for another unbiased magic review. I wanted to thank you guys that have messaged me all throughout the year during this pandemic. And today I wanted to answer a question that I get asked on average about twice a month, which is what is my everyday coin carry set and what are my favorite go-to effects that I like to do with that set? Now, if you're like me, you probably have an abundance of coin gimmicks and gaffes. Heck, you may even have a whole suitcase full of them, but you may have realized that you can't even carry half of those with you and why would you want to? So a number of years ago, I put together what I call the EDC coin set, which is the minimum amount of coins I need to carry with me to be able to do my favorite go-to coin effects that get the biggest reactions. Now, these coin effects are not slight intensive and they are audience tested. And obviously I keep going back to them for that reason because they get big reactions. Now I've already priced this out for you so you can put together an EDC coin set like this for less than $100, which is pretty good. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of other alternatives too. So the price range of a set like this will cost you anywhere from $100 to $300, depending upon how much you wanna put out. Now overall in the magic community, this is a topic that has not been delved into so deeply, which is really what set of coins should you be carrying with you all the time so that way you're ready at the drop of a hat to perform and that you have those effects in your mind ready to go. These are effects that are easy to perform. They're not effects that are hard to remember. So that's always a good thing too. So let's get into that. I'm gonna show you guys how you can put together an EDC coin set like what I have, and then all you have to do is carry around a purse like this with a set of coins, and you can do any number of effects that will amaze people. All right, let's take a look at the EDC coin set, and I'm gonna to explain to you how you can put this together yourself, and basically we're gonna go through the cost of it. So the first four coins are just uh, regular uh, half dollars. You could use regular half dollars, or you could use like Walking Liberty, half dollars like I am, or you could use Barber half dollars, or you could use even a silver dollar, whatever silver coin you like. These are just regular coins. The next coin is going to be a combination gaff gimmick coin here, where we've got a shell, and this is just a Johnson Liberty shell. I think I paid about $70 for this, but if you buy just a regular Kennedy Johnson half shell, it's gonna cost you about $32, okay? So it gives you an idea, and it's gonna fit over any one of these coins, so you can do any number of routines with it. And the flipper coin is the other part of the gaff. The flipper coin is a very excellent coin because you can hand it out to be examined, and if the person doesn't know what it is, they won't even understand how to open it, so they won't even notice that there's a secret to it, which is great. Now, a lot of people don't like flipper coins because you have to change the elastic every couple of months when it gets old or when it breaks. So that's kind of an issue for some people, although it only takes about five minutes to change once you get some experience with changing out the elastic. You can use orthodontic elastics. You could even cut a small elastic ring from a, from a thin balloon if you want to. You can use double-sided tape, or you can use uh, blue tack as well to hold the pieces together if you want to. But it is a very powerful coin, and I urge you to check it out. Now, if you don't wanna bother with having to fix the coin and that stuff, you can get um, the uh, Bob Swadling Next Generation Gravity Flipper. Um, and the reason I mention that is because that coin um, is built with a special elastic that seems indestructible almost. I've had mine now for three years and I've never had to change the elastic inside of it. It works just as well as it did the first day that I took it out, which is great. Um, the probably the only big difference is the really the price. Um, the Bob Swadling Next Generation Gravity Flipper is going to cost you about seventy dollars for a standard Kennedy. If you want to get the Walking Liberty one, which is what I have here, it's going to cost you about one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Now, if you just get a standard Gravity Flipper, that will cost you about forty-five dollars. Just gives you an idea of the prices, the ranges there. So um, you do get extra elastic material with this next generation gravity flipper. But like I said, I've used mine for three years. I've never had any issues with it. And the flipper coin really allows you to do a lot of routines that otherwise would be very difficult. So I like to keep the shell on top of the flipper just so that way I know what the gaff is compared to the normal coins, okay? The rest of the set is just two other coins. I've got here a copper English penny 
and then I've got a matching copper silver coin, which has got the Liberty on one side and the English penny on the other that matches perfectly. Now, uh, the copper silver coin will cost you eh, about $22 based on where you get it, unless you get something like this, which I got custom made, which is gonna be obviously more expensive. This one that was custom made cost me about $80, but that's because it was made with the coins that I wanted. I actually found these coins and sent them to the coin maker myself. But it's up to you what you want. So you can see that this whole set, which is really seven coins in a shell, is gonna cost you really around $95 if you go the most inexpensive way to about $300. Um, so this is all you're gonna need. And let's get into my top five go-to coin effects that I use this set for. Now, these effects are not in any order of importance. I like them all pretty much equally. And you will find that some of these effects are better to perform in certain conditions or situations than others. I would not recommend that you perform them one right after the other, but instead you can just perform one or two if somebody approaches you and asks you to show them something. So the first one that I'm gonna show you is of course the classic coins across effect. Now this is based on obviously the uh, David Roth shelled coins across. Now the way that I perform it is I do add elements from Homer Leewag um, from his coin one DVD as well, but you could just perform the standard shelled coins across. That's the way I did it for years. Always got really big reactions. It is really a go-to. It's so easy to perform. And the last coin that you do in the spectator's hands always gets really big reactions. So I urge you guys to check that out. You can find that on any number of instructional DVDs. And I know that probably most coin magicians have retaught David Roth's original shelled coins across effect as their own many times. So you can find uh, different variations and versions of the effect um, if you take a look for it around. Um, so that is the first of my go-to effects. It's a classic and there's a good reason for that is because this still gets really good reactions. Number two, on my list of top five go-to coin effects is three fly. And the version that I like to perform is the David Gabay Sanchez fly. Now I have added one small element from uh, Randy Raymundo, but otherwise I just lifted that from watching one of his performance videos. But otherwise the whole routine really is Sanchez fly. Let's take a quick look at it. In the video I'm gonna show you, I'm actually using Chinese coins, but really you could use any coins as long as you just have a shell. Let's take a quick look at it. What I like is you can clearly see how many coins are in each hand. Because of that, I think it adds to it. So anyway, get yourself some coins. Three, three to be exact, right? Three coins. And you wanna spread them out in the fan in one hand like this. And the idea is you want to try to get the first coin to just jump from one hand to the other, okay? You have to use a little bit of magic, of course, and it will jump just like that, from one hand to the other. Now, if you missed that, don't feel bad, so did I. I didn't see it go across either. Like I said, it was magic, okay? From here to here, it just went, almost like as it went by itself. Now, the second coin, your spectators gonna be watching you like a hawk, and you, to really prove to them that this is really happening by magic, what I like to do is this, a little up and down motion. Not too much, just a little up and down motion and they'll notice the second coin seems to have actually gone across by itself. Now, I don't know about you, but that looked pretty believable to me. Of course, that leaves us with just one coin over here, which eventually is going to join up with its friends here. Um, that is, unless you cross your arms, in which case it jumps back. I'm not really sure how that works, but to get the last one to go, uh, the easiest way is to make it invisible, toss it up into the air, and then when it lands, as it just did, it becomes visible again like that. And that's all three points across. That's number one, that's number two, and that's number three. Three coins from one hand to the other. All right, number three on my list of go-to coin effects that uses the EDC coin set is a sequence that I call uh, PV3 or production vanish of three coins. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. 
So this next sequence, which has become a go-to for me, I call PV3, which is production vanish of three coins. And this is based on a routine by Eric Jones called OxyClean, which he put out on his instructional video uh, called Metal 4. Uh, this is something I perform stand up and it's excellent for when you're in a crowded place with a lot of noise um, and you just want to show somebody something, something visual and quick and you don't need a lot of patter. And the extra noise does help cover any discrepancy of sound that you might hear. Um, this is an excellent routine that utilizes the flipper to the maximum. I'm going to show you what it looks like. You approach the person, you point towards their shirt, you say, what's that over there? They're going to say, what? You immediately produce the coin from nowhere. Now that's going to get obviously a reaction. You point again here, you're going to produce another coin. Now they just saw that you had two coins. You point again, you reach over and now there's three coins. So you've just produced three coins out of nowhere. And then you go into the following vanish sequence where you take the first coin, you apparently put it in your hand, you wave over it and it is gone. Um, I really like the cleanliness of this. I like to vanish all the coins into the left hand like this because it just looks really good here. And you say, look, actually it didn't go anywhere. Look, it's right over here. So you show that it came back and you say, it only goes somewhere if I really squeeze onto it tightly. And that's kind of nice because now they just saw two coins really vanish. The third coin, you could vanish it any way you want. If you want, you could vanish it in the exact same way that you vanish the other coins. You could do any kind of hand washing sequence you want to show your hands are empty. If you do that Gregory Wilson thing where you're like, oh, look, it's not here, it's not there. You could easily ditch the, the gimmick that way to the gaff. Um, so that is the sequence. It's extremely simple to perform, as you can see. It's very quick and visual and gets a lot of reactions. Number four on my top five go-to coin effects uh, goes to Troy Hoosier in his effect called Table Flipper, which is a three coins through the table routine that you could learn from uh, his book, Destroyers. I think he also put it out on a video set as well. And the reason why I like it is because it's very simple, very visual. Um, it's gonna really get some good gasps from people. Um, and it looks very clean uh, because you really can hand out the coins to be examined before and it really afterwards. Is so simple. Um, you're not using any extras, which is great. I love it. I've performed it countless times because it's so easy to perform. I think you're really going to like it a lot. Uh, just the visual nature of dropping the coins in the table and it going through the table, it just looks really good. So no top five uh, list would be complete without a copper silver routine. Um, now I'm going to give you guys a couple options here. For years, my go-to copper silver routine was one by Justin Higgum. Uh, which is called Crossover Coins. You can find it in his self-published spiral book called Expansions. It was put out in the 90s. Um, it's a two-phase copper-silver routine that uses no slights, very easy to perform, very convincing, very visual. And the lovely part was that the transposition happened between you and the spectator in their hands and your hands. And because of the design of the routine, it was very convincing. The spectator felt like they really um, saw the coins and it concealed the gaff really well. For years, that was my go-to copper silver routine. Love performing it, always got good reactions with it. Nowadays, I have another copper silver routine that's of my own invention that I use just because it's actually more visual. I get bigger reactions from it because the spectator feels like they have more control. And I found a way to be able to perform a similar routine as the David Roth uh, Copper Silver Classic without having to do the palm to palm transfer of the copper and silver coin. A lot of people I know in, really like the David Roth routine, but they don't like the idea of having to do the palm to palm transfer of the two coins. The issue with the slight is it's a very difficult slight to do, and it's very easy for the coins to talk when you're switching them from palm to palm. So it's one of those things where unless you practice it and you get it down really well, it's very difficult. And so I found that frustrating. And so what I did was I found a way around it. Um, and so I devised my own copper silver routine uh, that looks and feels very much like the David Roth 
Copper Silver Classic, but without having to do the difficult slight. Now, if you are interested, send me an email and I will send you a demo video of my routine as well as instructional so you can learn how to do it yourself. I don't mind sharing it with you guys. Um, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of it and it's really a great little routine. I've had a lot of fun with it. Otherwise, I would recommend that you hunt down the Justin Higgum routine because it really is phenomenal and I still perform it all the time because it's a great little copper silver routine. So that's my list of top five go-to effects with this everyday carry coin set that I use. I hope that you guys like it. I hope that you guys will build your own EDC coin set and get some good use out of it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know below. Thanks so much guys for tuning in and I look forward to more unbiased magic reviews with you guys.